Former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows has been found to be in criminal contempt of Congress. Well, at least that's what members of Congress have voted on. And now that charge will be sent to the Justice Department where a decision will be made as to whether or not Mark Meadows will be tried for this charge of criminal contempt of Congress. Now, this vote happened just yesterday, the vote of 222 to 208 sent the matter to the Justice Department to consider whether to prosecute Meadows, who would be the first former member of Congress to be held in contempt of the body he once served in nearly 200 years. Now, this is all surrounding the investigation into what happened in our nation's capital on January 6th. Mark Meadows was the White House Chief of Staff, meaning he was Trump's Chief of Staff. And in the beginning of this investigation, he was cooperating with Congress. He was cooperating with this select committee looking into the incident. But then he stopped cooperating. And he refused to answer any questions, he's refusing to testify, and he is citing privilege, executive privilege as a reason for why he's no longer cooperating. And to be clear, he could have a much stronger argument than say Steve Bannon when it comes to this situation. And I'll get to those details in just a second. But in regard to Republican members of Congress and how they voted on this issue, only two GOP lawmakers voted to hold him in contempt of Congress. That includes Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney. Now, again, Meadows refuses to cooperate with the investigation, but that wasn't always the case. In fact, we've been talking about some of these text messages that were sent to Mark Meadows as the riots were taking place. And the only reason why we know about those text messages is because at one time, Mark Meadows was cooperating and he handed those messages along with thousands of other documents over to investigators. Meadows initial cooperation with the inquiry, including around 9,000 pages of documents he turned over, has already given the committee its first substantial burst of momentum and political traction as it tries to establish a full accounting of the events that led to the deadly riot. Now, uh, that's, that's why we know about the text messages, as I mentioned. Um, but there were Republican lawmakers who also sent Meadows text messages as the riots were taking place. Now, we've known about the Fox News hosts who were, men, uh, who were texting him and urging him to do something to encourage Donald Trump to end the riots, say something, do something. Uh, we know about Don Jr. also sending panicky text messages to Mark Meadows, urging him to convince his own father to stop the riots. But we didn't know about the various Republican members of Congress who were also messaging him. And remember, these are people who were in the Capitol building as the riots were taking place. So I'm sure that they were pretty terrified and fear, in fear of their lives. And Cheney read aloud text messages that Republicans in Congress sent to Meadows on January 6th as violence engulfed the Capitol. Some of those messages included statements like, it's really bad up here on the Hill. Another said, the president needs to stop this ASAP. Another said, fix this now. And I think that these messages are relevant, mostly because of the fact that on that day when they feared for their lives, as they were experiencing the viciousness of these Trump supporters who breached the Capitol and were coming after them, they were sending these panicky messages to Meadows, but then they turned around and just downplayed what happened that day. Because their daddy, Donald Trump, might have given them a spanking and they don't want a spanking. They certainly do not want Donald Trump to bully them. So they either remained silent or downplayed what happened that day, even though they experienced the viciousness firsthand. So I think that's relevant. Now, does that mean that we've seen this incredible proof that you know, GOP lawmakers were coordinating what happened that day. I haven't seen that yet. I mean, that's why this investigation is ongoing. But it is fascinating to see how Republican lawmakers really feel internally and what they're willing to say publicly. So here's some more of the text messages that Liz Cheney read on the House floor. Let's watch. Mr. Meadows received said, quote, we are under siege here at the Capitol. Another, quote, they have breached the Capitol. In a third, 
Mark, protesters are literally storming the Capitol, breaking windows on doors, rushing in. Is Trump going to say something? A fourth, there's an armed standoff at the House chamber door. And another from someone inside the Capitol. We are all helpless. Dozens of texts, including from Trump administration officials, urged immediate action by the president. Quote, HOTUS has to come out firmly and tell the protesters to dissipate. Someone is going to get killed. It would take Donald Trump a whopping 187 minutes to do a damn thing. 187 minutes to do anything at all. In the meantime, you have all these terrified GOP lawmakers, you know, incessantly texting Mark Meadows, begging him to do something. It really is incredible. By the way, only two GOP lawmakers, Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney, voted to hold Mark Meadows in contempt of Congress. The committee also divulged a November 4th message from an unidentified Republican member of Congress to Meadows before states were even finished counting ballots, proposing an aggressive strategy in which Republican controlled legislatures in Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania and other states would just send their own electors instead of potential Biden electors chosen by voters. So far, I think that's the most, um, I, I, that's the strongest evidence of, an, of a coordinated effort. I'm not really understanding why the select committee has chosen to withhold the names of various GOP lawmakers who were sending these text messages, and in this case, you know, possibly doing some serious coordinating in terms of trying to steal the election, not necessarily coordinating to carry out the riots. But for the first time, we're starting to find some pretty fascinating information through this investigation, which. I had kind of lost a little bit of hope on. I felt like this had become nothing more than a political theater, part of political theater meant to essentially be part of the Democratic campaigning for the midterms. But no, it turns out we're learning some interesting facts through this investigation. Now, Representative Jamie Raskin says, look, through the documents that were provided, the non-privileged documents that were provided by former Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. Now that we know about GOP lawmakers trying to find various ways to overturn the results of the election, we need to actually have a talk with Mark Meadows. He needs to testify, he needs to respond to the subpoena. And he gives some more reasoning for that in this next clip. We have hundreds of questions for Mr. Meadows about information he has already admitted is not privileged in any way at all by the executive privilege, the Fifth Amendment, or anything else. Here's one of them. How did the following text from a House lawmaker influence Trump's plans to overthrow Joe Biden's electoral college majority of 306 to 232 after Joe Biden beat Donald Trump. And here's what that lawmaker wrote him. On November 4th, a member of this body wrote to Meadows, here's an aggressive strategy. One day after the election, why can't the states of Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and other Republican controlled state houses declare this is BS, where conflicts and election not called that night and just send their, just send their own electors to vote and have it go to the SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States. How did this text influence the planning of Mark Meadows and Donald Trump to try to destroy the lawful electoral college majority that had been established by the people of the United States and the states for Joe Biden? And I think Raskin makes a great point there. I mean, ideally, Mark Meadows would cooperate and would answer the questions. Again, I don't understand why they're withholding the name of the GOP lawmaker who was involved in that text message. But nonetheless, I think that you know, Mark Meadows testifying could be incredibly helpful. Now, will he do it? Of course not. And what he's claiming is that this is a privileged situation, meaning that 
hey, I was working for Donald Trump at the time. And so my communication with Donald Trump, my correspondence with other members of Trump's administration, all of that is privileged communication. And as a result, I do not need to respond to this subpoena. And unlike the situation with Steve Bannon, I do think that he has more of an argument. Okay, so unlike Bannon, who was not a member of government during the run up to January 6th, Meadows, who was one of Trump's closest White House advisors during the attack, may have a stronger case against cooperating with a congressional inquiry that seeks confidential communications with a president that could be protected by executive privilege. Now, Democrats think that Meadows wanted to cooperate, but then later decided against it due to bullying from Donald Trump. And there might be some truth behind that. I mean, we know what kind of person Donald Trump is. He is known to bully individuals around him if they don't do exactly as they're told. Jeff Sessions recused himself from the Russia investigation and he was fired as Attorney General because Trump was furious that he recused himself. And to be sure, the fact that Mark Meadows cooperated in this investigation at all has Trump in a complete fury. He is furious with Meadows. He's furious with Meadows about this. He's furious with Meadows about his book. I mean, he's just an angry guy who wants everything to be completely controlled by his wishes. And so you can't ever please Donald Trump, but they fall for it every time. Meadows is gonna continue carrying out what Trump wants him to do. I don't personally think that the DOJ is going to prosecute Meadows for criminal contempt of Congress. I could be wrong. And the reason why I think that is because he has more of a case here, more of an excuse here compared to what we've seen with Steve Bannon. He, he was privileged because he was the president's chief of staff. So we'll see how that all plays out. The other thing that makes me think this will go a little differently from the Bannon situation is, I mean, the Justice Department is run by Democrats. Democrats are notoriously weak. I, I was actually shocked that they decided to pursue Bannon. But Bannon's argument regarding privilege was just so ridiculous and so egregious that I think Merrick Garland decided, okay, we should try him for this. But we'll see with Mark Meadows. Finally, Mark Meadows is filing a suit in regard to this investigation. Meadows has filed suit against the panel to seek a court ruling to determine the validity of Trump's assertions of executive privilege. So we're, we will see where that goes. But again, what the American people are getting in terms of public statements from GOP lawmakers is very different from what they were communicating with Mark Meadows as the Capitol riots were underway. It's fascinating stuff. Bunch of feckless lawmakers who just lie to the American people over and over again, even when our democratic process is at stake. Just self serving, narcissistic losers. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.